Uh, good evening. Um, thank you all for coming out. And um, Melanie, thanks for organizing this, as usual. This has been a, a good visit. Um, I, I just want to talk just briefly about, and oh, I really appreciate the British, British Library here for, for, for hosting this, for having us here. Um, thank you very much. Um, every time I've told people that we're doing something at the British Library, they'll say, ooh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so I've enjoyed that too. Um, you know, jubilation came about I mean, a strange kind of way. I mean, putting together anthologies is something that I've been doing a great deal of. And, um, and the last sort of major Caribbean-based anthology that we did was, in, um, was a few years ago when we did a Calabash anthology. When we knew we were coming close, to coming up to the 50th anniversary, I thought it really would be a, a good idea to do, um, to do an anthology that did two things. One, that, that gave us a chance to, to showcase writing out of Jamaica um, uh, over, the, over the years, and really current writing, but also to see if we could find a way to commemorate this occasion in a complex, uh, sophisticated way, but yet one that was still celebratory. Um, when I approached the writers, um, I did not give them much of a rubric. I, I, I mean, apart from saying, if you can do something completely new um, for the anthology, that would be fantastic. Uh, but if you already have something that you've written or have published, but you feel that it's in keeping with the spirit of the anthology, um, then that would be good as well. Uh, the response was, was tremendous. Um, I got quite a, a large number of submissions, and I, it was a process to, to, to select and to pick the work that I thought um, would work well for the anthology. And People Tree published this. I think if you see the book, the cover is just a beautiful cover. It's a, an image from the celebrations in 1962, um, and it carries the energy of jubilation and the excitement of jubilation, so I thought that was great. Um, as Melanie said, they're just, uh, just a tremendous list of writers who are collected here. Um, and it's a reflection of their generosity and, and the, the, the immediate willingness to be, um, to be a part of, 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 a, of a project like this. I thought what might be good, though, is, is to give you a taste of it, is just to read a few pieces um, and, and maybe sections from pieces that I thought would speak to it. And you'll get the sense that... I'll tell you what I did not want. I did not want... Um, I, I, I did not want just a bunch of... Hey, Jamaica, 50 now, make me have a nice time, make me have fun. You know, I, you, know, you know what I mean? I really wasn't looking forward to that kind of thing. Um, and, and, and thank God we didn't get much of that, right? Um, so this is, this is Eddie Baugh, Edward Baugh's poem, Yabba, which he, he, he gave to us to use. My eyesight is not great, but anyway, here we go. From Twee... A yawa, an earthen vessel, dish, bowl, ladder, cooking pot, a plain, useful object, pleasing to handle, contentment to the eye, a mug's comfortable, no nonsense, thereness, the whimsy of a vase or a vase, wide rim sweep of a dish, shape spawned and spun from his conjurer's hands. Startled of turquoise against earth brown, deep forest green, yabba and monkey jar turns fine art, and malu protege, the yabba man, is master potter, maker, craftsman, high cheekbones, ebony glaze, forehead edged with wisdom lines, slant steady, patient eyes, by turns frolicsome and austere, his thumbs like spatulas poised. He's folded in earth now, but his fingers feel the wet and cling of clay. I, I mean, there's the w wonderful way that language works. And, and I think he's, he, he felt this would be a work that talked about the, the connection between the creative process and the earth, a kind of nationalism that grows out of a connection with the earth and that, 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 that craftsmanship and that creative work. Um, I want to look at a very brief section, a small section from Mark, Mark Morris, who gave us a very long poem, um, and I won't read all of it here, 
but there's, a, there's a, just a, a reflection, and he addresses his poem to Claude McKay, Dear Claude, and, and this is just a little section, it's a stanza. After 50 years, our writing learns the forms you began with, dialect ballads of the folk, memory planted in the country. Culture is an organic metaphor, an exchange for Keats' English, the verse of a colonial century that you mind when you built hymns to nostalgia and the Negro in Babylon, before Babylon was a watchword of wickedness and sorrow and being an outcast yourself with arm of steel to dig a trench or beat verse into fighting back. And again, you know, there's interesting things about Claude McKay who becomes a kind of, um, a kind of literary father figure for, for Mark McMorris, um, which, which is that McKay's first works were, in, were dialect works. And, and continue to have that strong connection to Jamaica. One of the striking things is if you hear recordings of Claude McKay, even in the latter part of his, his, his life, um, you, he, he could not shake the Clarendon in his, in, his, <laughs> in, his, in his, you know, if you hear a recording of if we, if we must die, I mean, it's just, it's just like, it hits you and you go, that's a yard man for true. I mean, it's like very, very clear. Um, I thought I'd end this little, this little sort of taster, which I, I hope you get this, because I think there's, you're going to find that there's a rich body of work here. Um, I thought I would, I would read um, um, a piece from, from, from Lorna Goodison, um, uh, which, which, which I, I found really just, just a lovely thing, and it's called Hope Gardens. You write to immortal, immortalize the long gone Sunday afternoons light years away by route of slow silver chichi omnibus, crossroads, old Hope Road, Hope Road, and in organdy Sunday school dress set to slip off good shoes and socks and dash across the green in Hope Gardens as the military band in suave uniforms sounded brass um pa pa instruments Seated now in a seminar, you are perplexed at this post-colonial scholar, scholar on as this post-colonial scholar on Earth's plots after heinous imperial plot, buried behind our botanical gardens, and you think pity the people never knew this as we passed for brownie camera, posed for brownie camera captured photographs by flowering trees or, oh joy, showed off in our wedding dandan by lily pond, lay down ourselves careless in beds of canna lilies, lost in daydreams of owning own places with lawns and square of a kerchief, we the ignorant, the uneducated, unaware that the roses we assumed bloom just to full eye, were representative of English lady beauty, unenlightened, we were so picked that we, unenlightened we were, so picked them on the sly to give as token to the love we got lost in the maze with quick thief as kiss. And this colonial design was nowhere in mind or sight. But even if, and so what? As long as they flung wide these two leaved wrought iron double gates, here we would be, gentlemen and ladies all, Human beings come to order, come in order to draw strength for the for the weak from our own hope gardens, and for for for, for Lorna, the poem is the idea that hope gardens becomes a place for themselves, a place for Jamaican people to take ownership of, despite the intentions behind the creation of the hope gardens. So these poems talk about the present moment, but also reflect on the past and res reflect on the idea of Jamaicanness, the idea of a kind of identity that is complicated and, and that is beautiful at the same time. Um, I'm, 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 so I'm very happy that we managed to do this, and I hope you will, you will enjoy um, reading the poems here and tracing back to the works of other writers, um, or the, the works of the writers who are here, the other work that is, that is really important, all right? So thank you all very much, and um, I hope you enjoy this. Thank you. Thank you.